Well, it is the end of another very harsh European winter. Spring is almost in the air, and Daryl and myself are packing the vans meticulously because we're on our first big European trip. The lake we're primary targeting is going to have fish 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80 pounds. We've got to cover every eventuality. There's loads of tiny catfish in that area. We might be using huge hook baits, we might be using tiny hook baits. So, uh, you know, we've basically got to cover every single base that we can um, and hopefully turn up and be able to adapt to the fishing that's presented to us and catch some absolute whackers. The water we've set our sights on is in central France. This part of the country has a mega history for truly enormous fish, but with that comes a fresh set of challenges. The journey down is far longer than a normal trip to a French holiday venue, and once in country, we expect the local anglers to give us a frosty reception as they're all very protective of their public waters. After a full day of travelling, we arrived at the lake just before it got dark. Come on, let there be no one there. In true Daryl style, his eyes were locked onto the water as soon as he saw it. Night fishing on this lake has been banned for the first time ever, so we scan the water as long as possible, hoping to spot just one fish as the light fades. With nothing to go on, we head to our local digs to start preparing for the early start the next day. Making the most of days only fishing means a very early start, but it's so important to get to the lake at first light to see where the fish are showing. We didn't see any signs of fish in the first half hour, so we tuned in the walkies and split up. The lake's around 60 acres in size, so spotting fish is never going to be easy. To make things even harder, it's split into two halves, so it made sense to have eyes on both sides at the same time. Well, I'll go round to, the, to the, the big bit round the corner, and we're covering almost the whole lake between the two of us then, aren't we? We'll just keep looking until something, something presents itself. Yeah, definitely, mate. It's uh, silly both stand in one part when you can spread yourselves out a bit. Yeah. Yeah, two sets of eyes are definitely better than one. Right, I'll keep on this, yeah? Okay, mate. It's been a lot of planning and preparation in advance of this trip, and uh, it's nice to finally be here. I always sort of uh, approach these sessions with a little bit of anxiety because you just don't know how it's going to pan out. We don't really know what's in here. We know there's quite a few big ones, but um, we've come really early to try and avoid the crowds, and there's no one here or one guy fishing. Um, which is ideal from uh, you know uh, not being bothered by other anglers' point of view, um, but obviously it makes it hard for seeing them. Um, so uh, you know I'm not going to rush to get the rods out at all. I've got no interest in just casting out into nothingness um, and hoping it's going to go off. If we have to stand in the rain all day looking, then that is what we will do. This is not how I pictured it. I suppose we should do in shorts. Down to Daryl, come in Daryl. Come in mate, you're right. I am now, I have to admit, I've gone back to the van and put all my winter clothes on. It is absolutely freezing. My, my hands were falling off. When you, um, you offered me those gloves earlier, I should have took them. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've put a second pair on. I've, uh, I've got some waterproof ones, so the other ones are drying out in the van. But yeah, it makes all the difference. Nice pair of warm socks and uh, an extra layer on, um, but the uh, good news is, mate, I think I've seen one. Roger that, mate. It's in absolutely nothing here. It's uh, dead as a door now. Uh, it's a nice vantage point here. Sort of, th th this bay doesn't look as big. I would say, gigantic sort of size, 35 acres, something like that, I reckon. Um, but it's nice. This is the sort of narrowest point, and you can see the whole thing. And pretty sure I saw one about 120 out off this bank, just out in open water, just turn over. Well, that's a good start, mate. Sounds uh, promising. Yeah, there's, there's a few cormorants out there working it as well, and I, and I didn't see it, I just saw the splash. But you know when they move a bit more water and the ripples sort of go out a little bit further, it, it just looked like that. So I'm, I'm gonna keep them trained on that spot, and if I see something else, then we can act on it. Roger that, mate. I'll, uh... I'll keep looking around here for a bit longer, and then I'll, I'll come around. 
there, mate. Um, I think breakfast is coming as well. Which is very welcome. Fuel for the team. Obviously, when you come to a big lake, you've got to try and cover it during the best hours. And the best hours are obviously the, the first couple after light. They're the times when the fish are most prone to showing. And uh, if you both look in the same part of the lake at the same time, you could be really missing what's going on in another part. So by separating and covering as much water as possible, you can really you know, keep your eyes on that water. And when one shows, focus on it. And then, uh, yeah, you won't be too far wrong. Bravo. What's happening then? Out there, see, 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 what the, see what the, the, whatever it is now, is it a duck out there or grebe? It's a duck, I think. Where the white sign is, Yeah. just a bit beyond that. And uh, I saw one that showed sort of further over and slightly left, and one that was right of it, and about that sort of range. But it could it could be a, a cormorant going down, but it just it looked like a bit of white water, you yeah. know? You know, when, when, they did, when the, a fish moves a bit more water than a bird, doesn't it? You didn't see you a know? cormorant come back up? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that was a cart, bro. That you. was close as well. Was that, that is what? I'm going to fish here, mate. Yeah, I reckon you might. Is that alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can go down there if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked alright. Get in! You should get the gear, oh, mate. Mate, it changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Seeing one proper, it changes everything. It's on. We're on, mate. It's on. It's, yeah. Get them bits of yellow out there. I look at carp fishing as it, it is a very simple thing, you know. If you are where they are and you fish technically well, you will catch them. So as soon as I sim one, I would just want to get my rods out. Before, before that on a low stock lake, I'm thinking there's no point in casting out because you could be hundreds and hundreds of metres from a fish. But as soon as you see one, if you can put your rig within a few metres of that fish, you know, that could be the tip of the iceberg. It could be a herd of them. You know, I'll be running back to the, back to the car, get my wheelbarrow and wheel spinning all the way around here. Can't get the rods out quick enough. It's so exciting when you're seeing them show. Just got back into the swim and another one shown out there. So I've whacked out the rods, or just one of the rods, just to get mark the sort of range and gone around the distance sticks. It's 21 wraps, 84 yards. So I'm going to go 21, 22, 23, just stagger them out there and uh, see if um, we can snare something quick. No bait at all. I'm sure Daryl's going to fish singles as well at uh, this time of year with the water cold, the fish are showing, you know, uh, a bright one in the right place is usually enough. European anglers often tell us that our tactics won't work on their lakes. Our success in Germany a couple of years ago and in Belgium the year before proved the same winning baits and rigs will work everywhere. So we stuck to our game plan not using the boat and getting out as quickly and quietly as possible. With it being our first day on a brand new lake, there was no way we were going to go in with heavy baiting. A softly, softly approach was far more likely to produce a quick bite, and whilst I was surprised it happened so quickly, I wasn't surprised it was Daryl that got the bite, as he's an absolute master at this kind of fishing. Okay, so uh, we cast a rod to a fish that I've seen, and uh, didn't get a very good drop, but I've got my bead pushed right up the leg core leader, and uh, I wasn't sure if it's presented. I'm asking questions of it. What's the clarity of the water like? I'm, and I'm, I'm really unsure, sort of all those sort of thoughts going through my mind. Do I need to put some bait out to, to help them find it? And um, yeah, just a couple of bleeps, felt the line. Everything had gone slack and uh, wound up a load of slack, maybe 20 meters or so before I made contact with a fish and we're into one. Feels all right, a little bit of weed about. Love you. <laughs> Good stuff, eh? That feels all right. Brand new rods, these. Christened, this is the christener. There it is. Let's change the mood a bit. Proper doubting it, all the, all the water clarity. Yeah, I was really doubting it, thinking, 
might be better to, to plum and bait. And... Hang, on. Hang on, here he goes now. Oh, yes! <laughs> Come on. In. Yeah, man. Yeah, First man. First one. Good work. So this morning, I've gone into the left of Dan, you know, obviously Dan was right on the fish first thing, and uh, the only other fish that I'd seen that wasn't in front of him was to, to the left of him, in close, roughly 30 to 40 yards out in front of the next swim. So I put them out of that sort of range, but I never saw another fish there, and slowly as the day's gone on, I've seen more and more fish showing between 80 and 120 yards out, again, mostly in front of Dan, but as the sort of day wore on, they come a little bit more left, a little bit more left until they're in front of me, and I repositioned two of my rods out there, and one of them, the one I probably fancied the least, the one that went down into the weeds, produced the fish. Sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> it's just under 30, mate. 20, 29 and a half. Lovely. Well, here he is, the first fish of the French adventure. We've come all the way down here to central France. It's March, it's cold. And to catch one on the first day, that is a mega, mega result. It came after repositioning the rod, and that was the key. That's the thing that's made the difference. Spending the time this morning looking for the fish, found them, making the cast, but then making the uh, sub adjustments, you know, seeing that fish show, casting out there, absolutely buzzing. So this is my rig for the session in France. You know, normally I don't really change too much from what's worked really well for me in the past, but um, having fish with Dan, especially on Masterclass 4, watching him catch all of those fish in Germany, you know, it, it just, it suited what I wanted. A pop-up rig for fishing low-line pop-ups and the ability to quick change, you know, keeping everything quick and minimal. You know, I was just, I saw him doing it. I've changed it a little bit. I'm using a size six wide gape X. It's a hook that I've got loads of confidence in and, you know, People say, can you use it with a wide gape? Can you, most people use it with a curved shank? And of course you can, it's worked really well for me. And in this session in France, I can move that bead up, you know, we don't know the lake, there's a little bit of weed around. And if, if I want to cast to a showing fish and I don't know what the bottom's like, I move that bead up, knowing that if I get any form of drop, that'd be presented perfectly over the top. Well, the light is now dropping on day one and uh, we haven't seen any fish show for quite some time now. That was a major, major result, Daryl, getting that fish. He, he plays it down, but he is the best of the best. And, um, you know, to come on a new lake and get a bite this early in the year on your first day is a major result. Um, you know, I felt like my best chance was probably this morning. Saw fish showing out here, got all excited. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got decent drops on the rigs. I knew they were on clear areas. It was a right, about the right range as well. Um, I can't explain why it didn't happen, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put some bait out, and then once we've wound in, put some bait out, just scatter a few spawns around, just so there's a bit of smell in the area, that same range that I saw in this morning, um, and then come back and start here tomorrow. I'm not going to get the gear out of the car, I'm just going to look and look and look. If they're on the bait, brilliant. If they're not and they're elsewhere, then we'll be driving around and setting up on them. But, um, you know, a real result um, for the team for day one. Um, but personally, I wish I'd caught one. Good morning, um, it's day two. Up early again, got here about half hour before it got light and uh, the mist has made it very difficult to do any fish spotting. It means high pressure as well. We're going to get good temperatures today. I have seen one fish show straight in front of me out here, but well beyond the bait that I put out last night. Daryl on the other hand is getting his rods out now. I've left my gear in the car. I didn't really want to commit to a, to a spot just in case they, they start showing somewhere else. Getting a bite yesterday has put Daryl a long way ahead. You know, he's, he's marked his area up um, last night. He's baited up at long distance, probably about 30 yards past me. So anyone that knows match fishing will know the guy that fishes furthest catches the most. 
Um, so I'm a little bit concerned that I'm too close in, but I'm, I'm not going to be hasty. It's only the second day on a completely new lake. Um, I'm going to keep watching and see what happens. If they start showing longer um, past my bait, I won't even bother about fishing on the bait at all, and I'll just go out longer um, and see what occurs. But um, really, at the moment, I'm follow, following Daryl's lead because um, you know he's, he's a master at working lakes out really quickly. It's no surprise he's had a bite, you know, uh, on his first day here, and uh, you know I'm, I'm going to be watching him and seeing what occurs. So it's day two, obviously having caught, you know, I'm keen to fish back where I am. Um, but yeah, tactics wise, I'm not 100% convinced I'm doing it right. You know, one fish is the tip of the iceberg, really. You know, there's, there's more to be caught, certainly. Um, I'm sort of thinking it's spring, the water is warming from the, the surface down, and that the fish are probably quite high in the water. And having looked at Google Earth, this particular end of the lake is peppered with features. So I think if you were knowledgeable about the lake and you knew which features were the ones and the correct depths, I'm sure there's more fish to be, to be caught. But at this moment in time, we're, we're hedging our bets, trying to keep disturbance down. And uh, I have located a piece of gravel in my swim near to where I caught. Um, but it's still, I don't know, it still feels on the drop 10, 11, 12 foot deep. So um, ideally, I'd be fishing on a feature that was sort of seven foot deep, you know, too deep for the coops to be all over you all the time but um, yeah I'd like to find a spot five six seven foot and I'm, I'm sure they're out there you know I'm certain the fish are here um, I'm thinking they're probably high in the water so failing to be able to to reach these features from the bank the other thing I'm thinking is zig rigs you know a lot of people when they go to France sort of they think it's an English tactic but carp are carp and when the water's warming from the surface I think targeting the upper layers or the shallower water is where it's at this time of year. Daryl is spot on. Carp are cold blooded so they're drawn to the warmer water in the shallows or near the surface on warm sunny days. With my swim looking totally dead I decided to take the boat in search of fish up in the water or moving into the shallow bay around the corner. From the boat it's easy to spot fish that you would never see from the bank and if the water's clear enough you can see if there are spots nearby to place a bait on as well. After touring the entire far end of the lake and looking in all the bays and under all the snags, I hadn't seen a single fish. I did find some awesome looking plateaus and island drop-offs, so I decided to pre-bait with a mix of maize and boilies with a plan to keep an eye on the baited areas over the coming days. If the carp got onto the bait and started showing, we could move straight onto them. Once I was back at base camp, Daryl was straight out in the boat to bait his long areas ready for an early start tomorrow morning. Well, Daryl and I have decided to sacrifice the last couple of hours of daylight to really sort of interrogate our spots. Daryl's found a nice hard area out there yesterday evening and uh, I wanted to do the same. I've had a good cast round just with the lead um, on the marker rod, just feeling the bottom, finding out where the weed is, finding out where the hard spots are. And at 30 rod length straight ahead of me in a sort of area where fish showed on the first day, there was a rock hard spot out there and it was 12 to 13 foot deep. Um, a lot deeper than I thought it would be. When I felt it down, I would have said it was six to eight foot. Um, and then all around it, it's only a foot or two deeper. There is some weed out there, but there's some clear areas as well that are nice and smooth. So I guess that's just like a muddy bottom with a little hump of gravel amongst it all. But the most important thing is what it feels like on the marker rod. Um, you know, rather than spending hours out there in the boat looking for stuff, you know, the, the depth is, is as shallow as I can find. It's nice and hard, it's clean. I put a load of bait out there now, probably half a bucket of maize, tigers, a few chopped up boilies. I've put buttercorn gall over it um, just to give it a bit more scent. That will sit there overnight. Obviously, we're back off to the uh, to the jeep um, overnight, and then we'll be back in first thing in the morning. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get these swims again. Everything will be clipped up at 30 rod lengths. I won't wait to see fish. I'll just put the rods out, commit to that area, and then if we see them showing somewhere else, obviously we'll move. But I feel much better now establishing an area and having a decent amount of bait out there and knowing what I'm going to be doing first thing tomorrow morning.
feels decent, but I don't know if it's got weed on it as well. Left you've, got, you've got that line, I think. But the left hand line. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just see what you're doing. That's all you stay there. Cheers, mate. Oh, it's caught in some weed. Come on, man. Oh, it's all about shaking legs, bruv. Big fish there, isn't it? No, but it's suddenly started fighting. Fighting really weird, like it's fair looked. Bit of air, come on. Come on, be good to me. Be good to me. Let's go. On. Be good to me. Come on. Get in that net. Get in that net. Oh, oh. Yes, get in. Yeah, brother. Yes. Ah. Yes. Forty. I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like forty to me. Man. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't keep me waiting. It's just over 46. Yeah, get it! <laughs> Monster! Oh, come on, big fella. Yeah! It's wicked. First one from a new lake is always special. But what a way to start, 46 pound. All the effort of getting up early, all that effort yesterday getting the boat out putting a load of bait in a spot that was much further out than where I started. That was the key to the success. And uh, this one was taken on an IB pop-up on my favorite spinner rig, and it's soaked in Wonderberry goo. Really citrusy sort of flavor. And uh, that was following Daryl's lead because he got his bite on an IB pop-up. I thought, I've got to do the same. And this is the result. Yes, get in. So Dan's caught one. Am I gonna change anything? I don't know really. I've not seen any fish. I've got no idea of where exactly they are. You know, they've, they've been showing a liking for the, the swims that we're in. Um, I, I don't know really. I don't know if there is any sort of change of swim options available. I've not seen fish anywhere else to, to wanna to react to. So I'll probably stay put where I am until I see something else. What a day's weather. Right, I'm going to uh, just cast this, get the, the braid nice and wet uh, and tight on the spool. I've just gone around the distance sticks. Um, I don't need to put the marker float out. Oh, come on, look at it. My rods are clipped up at 30 rod lengths. So with the swing back of the lead, the, the line marker's moving about six foot down the rod as the line tightens. So I've just gone 29 and a half with the spawn. Oh. Gonna put six to eight out. Um, medium spawns, nice and easy to cast this. Shake it down into the nose. 
just put a couple out over each rod just to ring the dinner bell. Ah, and the spot has opened. Ah, the dying seagull, as we call it. Shake it down into her nose. Slightly left of where I wanted it. About six foot to the left. So that one doesn't count. If it's not on the money, it doesn't count. So I'm going to put six more out, try and get two on each rod. And uh, I've put a line marker on this rod as well so I can extend out to maybe 30 rod length. So it's dropping slightly behind where the rigs are landing on the bottom nice to have a bit more of a spread but I won't do that now I'll just put bait right on top of where I'm fishing um, but if I get another bite later on I will spread it out a little bit more try and fade it right there you go the important thing is to not put too much out you know, you're only trying to inspire them to feed again. A load of bait went out yesterday, um, which I dare say they haven't eaten it all. Um, so all you're doing now is just drawing them back in with the sound of the bait and a bit more smell in the water. With the spots topped up, it was time to get the rod back out there. Fortunately, the other rigs hadn't been moved in that first fight, so I didn't need to redo them. The rain was absolutely hammering down, and the carp gods were definitely not making it easy for us. Daryl had spotted a couple of fish in the channel, so he repositioned one of his rods down there with the other two left on his long baited area. Well, as you can see, it's pretty miserable and uh, things took a bit of a turn for the worse. There's uh, some other guy on the other side and uh, he initially went out with his bait boat and went close in and wasn't any problem, but he's just been out sort of 300 yards from me swimming in front of Dan somewhere, put some H-box down and then he sort of skirted round and he's putting rigs out here 150 yards from me. You know, that is the sort of thing that happens on these sort of public lakes. People come from all over the show and unfortunately don't show much regard for anybody else it's it's just the way it is you know luckily he hasn't he hasn't come across me lines he's basically took charge of 40 percent of this this bit of water out here but uh yeah luckily he hasn't invaded exactly where we're fishing and uh hopefully his disturbance in the boat if he continues to do that will keep the fish in front of us but they're not showing much we don't know what's happening but yeah we didn't need that demon this one. Like a dog on a lead, like a dog on a lead, just lead him in. I'm underneath both the other lines. Oh, Dare not lift the rod up. I don't want to come into contact with him other lines. Oh my shaking its head so much. Come on. Unbelievable. Still not seeing it. That's a catfish. 
Oh, man, if I'd lost that, I would have said it was a monster. Didn't even know there was any of these in here. Come here, you horrible things. Gotcha. Oh, what a disappointment. Gutted. Down to Daryl, coming Daryl. Tell him, mate, you're right. Yeah, well, sort of, mate. Um, same rods roared off again, middle rod. Well, it didn't really roar off, it was a really weird bite. And uh, it felt like it was shaking its head the whole way in, like just had my heart in my mouth the whole time. When it got close in, it proper led me a merry dance and uh, it just felt like an absolute monster, like a big, long, powerful creature. When it come up, it's a bloody catfish, isn't it? <laughs> well, I didn't even know they were in here, mate, but um, that's not great, is it? No, mate, we knew the little tiny Poisson shell were in here, but, um, but not the big ones. I mean, it was probably 30 pound at a guess. I hooked it in the net and just let it go, but um, it's weird how it flips around, doesn't it? Like the, you know, yesterday or the day before, I wasn't really feeling it in here, and you, you've had one, and yeah, I know what you mean. That guy with a boat—that's just a joke. He, he, I reckon he's got 400 yards between his left hand rod and his right hand rod. I mean, that's uh, couldn't be further away from Elstow style if he tried. <laughs> yeah, mate, he's. Uh... Yeah, he's covering a bit of water. He isn't invading the bit where the fish are, luckily, but it's just not nice having lines up the back of you in all directions. No, mate, I think that's just uh, the nature of um, public lakes over here and uh, people just uh, not, not giving a toss, you know, uh, how close they go to you or how many swims they carve up when they put the rods out. Yes, mate, but uh, we have to make do. We're here, we've got to do, do the best we can. Absolutely, mate. Well, we've, we've got any more species, and we'll put a keep net out, and we'll try and get front cover of... Cover of angling times or something like that. Roger that, mate. All right, mate, keep us posted if anything happens. Roger out. This one definitely feels like a carp. Gone right underneath the other two lines. Keep away from the other two lines. Kite well right. Funny bite, just a drop back, and then it was weeded up. Get in that net, get in that net. It's a monster, get in that net. Yes, get in. Oh, the other rod's going.
Yes! Oh my God. It's coming in towards me really quick. It might not even be a car. Really strange. Well, it is a car, definitely. It's all kicking off, brother. It's all kicking off. Come on, get in the net. Get in the net. What are you doing? <laughs> Scoop! <laughs> yes! Double trouble, man! That one is massive. Oh, that is massive, man. <laughs> that is huge. That is big. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Your left hand rod's going, mate. Right, I'm coming. Hey, mate, it's the way you scream I'm coming, I'm coming, coming. It's all going mental, isn't it? Danny, uh, he's got a couple of absolute monsters there. Well, one absolute monster. Another good fish is going off for him out there, and it's looking pretty quiet for me. But a couple of fish showed behind where I'm already fishing and um, I recast a rod out there. I've got a sort of spinner rig with a bead pushed up on the leg core. Didn't feel particularly clear, but it went down to the bottom with a sort of a muffled drop. I left it, because obviously there's fish in the area after seeing them show. And uh, it's just absolutely bust off. I'm just hoping it's uh, a big one like what Dan's got, because I tell you, it is absolutely massive. Is, uh, feeling like a really good fish. It might be in the weed, it might be that that I can feel, but it feels really difficult to move through the water. Saying that, I haven't caught a big one in ages. <laughs> it feels good, I can just see some colour down there. I can't see it very clearly, but I, can't, I really can't tell how big it is. I'm, there it is, there it is, look. Yeah, it's, uh, I would say it's a 30 pounder of some, some description. There he is, more than welcome. Right, come here mate, in there you go. Ooh boom. Oh, he's nice, I like him, he might even be a 40. Saying that, I don't know. He's 35, he's got to be. <laughs> Ready? <Yeah>. Got it? <laughs> oh, God, put it up. It's a gnat's cock over 70. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's like literally really? back. It's the tiniest bit over 70. Yeah, baby! Oh, come on, big fella. Oh, yeah, look at that. What a beast. 70 pound. Oh, this is what we came to this lake for. What a result. Oh. Yeah, man. They're the sh oh, they're the shots. They are the shots, brother, aren't they? Yeah. The light is unbelievable.
Yeah. What a day. 44 pounds this one. What an amazing lake. Oh, just blown away. And uh, can't wait to start fishing again tomorrow. Again, another one on the Wonderberry and Ivy pop up. That little spinner rig, it was absolutely nailed. What a double take to have. Well, we're just uh, doing Dan's photos and my rod's just absolutely bust off again. It's the same spot as where I caught the, uh, the other one just a minute ago. Obviously, a uh, few fish out there after seeing those ones show. Oh, it's a common. It's all good for me. It's good for you. Tonight we will drink Cronenberg. The fringe weak stuff. Cronenberg. I'm having too much fun, Chris. <laughs> Die. Check that out, 53 pounds of French Miracarp, absolutely buzzing. It's come after a reaction, nothing was happening in my swim, Dan was catching and uh, I went for a little wander, saw a couple of fish top and the recast produced this one, absolutely buzzing. It's amazing how all the fish in the lake started to feed at the same time. Darrell's spots were hundreds of metres from mine and in totally different parts of the lake. With four bites coming in one mad feeding spell, we did the photos and got the fish back as soon as humanly possible, giving us just enough time to get out in the boat and rebait for the next day. Clearly late yeah. afternoon was a great time of day for a bite on this lake in the late winter or early spring, and back at the lodge it was time to reflect on a crazy day's angling. Well, what an epic start to the session. Never would have dreamed that I would have got 70 pounder, just like, just absolutely off the scale with them other couple of 40s as well. Been plagued by them small fish today, but um, you know, I'm pretty confident for, uh, for getting a few more in the next few days. What do you reckon? Well, you should do, mate. Bait's out there, you've been catching them. Yeah, we've both been catching them, to be fair, haven't we? Yeah, I'm hoping uh, they're gonna come back to that spot. You've got a bit of a thing going out there. The weather's not been great today. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Well, early start in the morning, mate. I think best we lights out and uh, crack on tomorrow, yeah? Yes, mate. Lights out. Daryl, what are you doing? Nothing, mate. Can I sleep? <laughs> 